Um, Joshua Pierce. Thank you for a $5 super chat. I'm flying below 400 feet and a private owned plane flies over the river I live at near 7,500 feet above the water. Who's in the wrong? Uh, Joshua Pierce, it is always the responsibility of the SUAS operator to see and avoid manned flights. Uh, that is the FAA's position. And I, I want to I say, sometimes when I say what the rules say, this is, a, this is a legal question. This is a regulatory question. Sometimes when I say that, some people think that I am endorsing that position, that I am in favor of that position. People say, uh, you know, do I have to register my drones? And I say, the FAA regulation is that such and such has to be registered. And they think that means that I'm like in favor of regulation because I didn't say, you don't have to register them and you shouldn't register them. And anybody who registers them is a... Blah, 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 blah. You asked, do I have to register them? I assume what you mean by that is, what, does the FAA expect me to register them? And I answer the question that I assume you're asking. That's So for, for the record... That's where that answer comes from. The FAA's position is that unmanned uh, SUAS drones, quote unquote, are always expected to avoid manned flights. So if you're flying at 100 feet and a helicopter comes in between the trees and buzzes by and hits your drone, the FAA's position will be that it was your fault for not seeing that coming and getting the hell out of the way. Now, this is tricky because, like, it's th there are situations where a low-flying aircraft, especially a helicopter, could come into view, even assuming you, like, have a spotter whose head is on a swivel, who's listening and looking and listening to a radio. There are situations where a low-flying aircraft, especially a helicopter, could come into view before you reasonably could possibly have gotten out of the way, at which point you know, F you, you better have your ducks in a row, okay? And you're going to go, the FAA is going to be like, hey, why didn't you get out of the way? Your job is to avoid a uh, manned flight. And you're going to be like, look, I had a spotter. They were on the radio. They were looking around. This helicopter came around the hillside and I had three seconds to and look at my DVR. There was just nothing I could have done. And the FAA is going to go, oh, I really want to find a way to make this your fault. And you better hope they can't find one. But if you're an FPV pilot with your goggles on and you're just tooling around over the lake one day and you don't have a spotter because like, pfft, right? And you're just like, derp, 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 derp. I'm fine. I'm at 100 feet. Everything will be fine. And a freaking airplane comes along and hits you. You better better hope you better get the hell out of there and hope nobody knows who you are because you're going to get you're going to get hung out to dry and the thing to keep in mind as big data point points out is faa regulations allow manned flight at low altitudes under certain circumstances okay so just because you're below 400 feet does not mean you can assume that there will never be a helicopter or an airplane flying at that altitude. There absolutely are situations where they're allowed to fly at low altitude. And Slaughter Bartfast says, yeah, but low altitude flights are supposed to be over unpopulated areas. He's not supposed to be below 500 feet in an area where, where you're at. Yeah. Okay. Good luck. Good luck. Whose side do you think the FAA is going to take? The manned general aircraft, general aviation pilot who says with his with all his certificates, who's like, well, I was flying over an unpopulated area at an altitude of 432 feet AGL. And uh, this aircraft drone was in my way. Yeah. Yep. And you're going to be like, but sir, but sir, I was just flying my drone. It's, it's just fine. It shouldn't have been here. And they're going to they're going to hang you out to dry. So, Cali FPV, thank you for a uh, $5 super chat. What's your thoughts on dynamic damping? 
I pretty much see the default or off. The only difference I see is in motor heat. Callie, uh, many people turn off dynamic damping because it makes PID tuning simpler. The, the fewer dynamic things there are, the more straightforward it is to PID tune uh, because you're just removing variables. Dynamic damping is very difficult to tune if you don't have black box because it's very difficult for you to know if the D term, what the, it's very difficult to even know what the D term is doing unless you're looking in back black box. And most people, most people don't go to the trouble. So most people either run the defaults or they turn it off completely. On many of my quads, I just run the defaults and I'm happy. If I'm going to pin tune a quad, I would turn it off. And I would only turn, and I would just try to find the right D gain for my, uh, for my build. Uh, Steve-O says, thank you for a $10 super chat. We are, we are past the three o'clock when I would normally cut the stream. Siati is not streaming today, so I'm not taking his time. We're going to keep going until we finish the super chats and then we're going to be done. So, uh, if you want to see the stream, keep going leave super chats. Otherwise we're going to, we're going to, we're already over time. Steve-O said, thank you for a $10 super chat. I'm trying to squeeze in some viewing at work. I tried using external black box with Betaflight 442 and had issues. It works with 440. Is that a known issue? Blunty, is there an issue like, he says external black box. I assume he means an SD card reader on a UART. Do you agree? Yeah, I think that's what he means. I have I haven't heard of any bugs like that. You can always go on GitHub on issues if you type in. Just for anybody who doesn't know, uh, if you want to find out if there's an issue and you don't want to have to ask, you can always go on to GitHub. GitHub can be a little scary for a person who's never been on GitHub, but you can just type into Google Betaflight GitHub, just like Nerdwell's doing here. Click on uh, Betaflight, and then you go up to the top there and click issues. Um, if you click issues, and then I typically delete open an issue so you can see if it's an old issue as well, um, or a PR has been set to fix it, I typically delete issue as well. And then okay. you just type in there. What should we search for? I, do. So I would say probably black box and look for something posted in the last like little while. Yeah, there's a lot of black box related. Oh, black box. Well, Black box functionality missing on 441 on the Omnibus F4 target. Oh, a couple other things to remember, and I doubt this is the case, but 44 obviously has builds. I would assume it builds the same, <laughs> though, between 440 and yeah, 2. Yeah, he says it's working on 440, so it's not. Is there a, a thing he could have done here? Is black box a feature that needs to be selected, or is it always enabled? I think black box is always enabled, isn't it? Unless it's the special chip. I think it's always enabled. He's doing external, so I don't think it that matters. Yeah. yeah. And if for external, it's just going to be in the ports. It's been a long time since I did external. It's going to be in the ports tab, and then is it under peripherals? Yeah, black box logging. All right. We don't, we don't think that there is a known bug that's causing that, and I don't see anything here. And also, uh, there's a Betaflight has a Discord, so you can always go ask over there if you're not sure. The other thing I would make sure you do before you ask them is just dump 440 and flash 442 again and make sure it doesn't work on 442. Because I've seen quite a few people like, oh, there was a bad config where I pasted a diff and now it doesn't work. But it turns out you actually just needed to reflash fresh and then try it. And the mm. fresh flash you did to 440 fixed it. You know, that Don't sort paste IO, oh, I see. When you flashed back to 440, you wiped your config and it changed the thing in your config that was causing it not to it's work. It's possible. And so if yeah. you now go forward to 442, it may work again too. Yeah. It's worth okay. a shot before you report it as a bug. Yeah, fair. Uh, 